Hello everyone. In this session, we are going to focus very briefly on the journey to uh, the fluid mosaic model of the membrane structure. So let us look at the learning outcomes of this session. When it was found that cells in water formed droplets, it was observed to be analogous to oil droplets. And hence, it was predicted that the membrane could have lipids and these lipids would make it semi-permeable. Gorter and Grendel, through their experiment, proposed that the membrane must be a bilipid layer. Davison and Danieli and Robertson proposed the unit membrane theory with two layers of protein sandwiching the bilipid layer. Thereafter, Singer and Nicholson's fluid mosaic model proposed that proteins are interspersed within the bilipid layer with lipids and proteins being in constant motion. So now let us look at one by one how the entire theory of the membrane being a bilipid layer came up. So we all know that for a cell, okay, within the cell you have an aqueous environment and outside the cell also you have an aqueous uh, environment. So basically what we look at or understand is that the bilipid layer is able to or the membrane is able to compartmentalize. Okay, so uh, the fundamental structure of the membrane is the bilipid layer. And is the bilipid layer stable? These are certain questions that were coming up again and again as people began to or scientists began to understand and study the basic membrane structure. By 1950s, because of the transmission electron microscopy, it was clear that the Membrane definitely had two layers as one can observe. You can see very distinctively two layers observed. So this is a, the transmission electron microscopic view of the bilipid layer in which the outer layer is considered to be the outer leaflet and the inner layer is considered to be the inner leaflet. However, even uh, before the microscopic study of the membrane in 1925, uh, two scientists E. Gotter and R. Grendel had already begun studying the membrane and then they and they used the RBC membrane for the stu study. Now the choice of the RBC membrane is very strategic because uh, RBCs have no uh, nucleus so they do not have internal organal membranes and therefore what exclusively can be studied is the plasma membrane. So, plus you get uh, a lot of RBCs uh, from the blood and so isolating the RBCs is also easy. So, thereby they chose the RBC membrane. Now, uh, once they isolated the RBCs, they actually tried to study and find out what is the surface area of the RBC membrane. So, from this... Uh, this was an important uh, fact that they studied. We will look at why it is an important fact in just a few seconds. Now, having isolated the RBC, what was done is that from the RBC membranes, the lipids were extracted. And this is possible by using detergents. Mild detergents can be used. Now, we all know that detergents are amphipathic in nature. That is, they have a hydrophilic end and they have a hydrophobic end. And uh, using these detergents, one could, uh, you know, uh, look at the fact that uh, uh, the lipid membrane can be uh, penetrated into by these detergents and you could have the lipids extracted. Now, the question that would come up in uh, over here is why or how did Gotter and Grendel believe that there would be uh, that the lipids have to be extracted and the, that the membrane has lipids. So previous to their study, what was observed is that cells in water form droplets and it is very analogous as mentioned before that oil droplets form, uh, oil droplets are formed in water. So therefore, uh, the already the kind of understanding was that the membrane does have lipids and so 
uh, Gorder and Grendel actually extracted the lipids from the RBC membrane. Now, once they extracted the lipids, they put all these lipids into, again, an aqueous uh, solution and they mixed it thoroughly. And having mixed it thoroughly, they, le uh, they let it uh, be for some time. And after some time, what they observed is that they got a formation of what is called as a monolayer of these lipids at the air-water junction. Okay, very understandable for the fact that this is a monolayer that can be observed with the amphipathic lipids of the membrane, the amphiphilic heads being towards the water and the, uh, and the hydrophobic tails being towards the air because here there is no water present. When they found out or calculated the surface area of this monolayer, they found that the surface, the surface area of the monolayer is uh, twice that of the surface area of the RBC per se. So with this, therefore, they were able to conclude that the lipid membrane is actually a bilipid layer. So you can see how if you have a single layer, you would have double the surface area. But if you have it as a bilipid layer, then the surface area will decrease by half. So this is the this is the way uh, Gotter and Grendel proposed that the membrane is a bilipid layer, and of course it was then confirmed by the transmission electron microscopic view that indeed there is a, a bilipid layer, or indeed the cell membrane is a bilipid layer. Now let us go ahead and look at what are the models that were proposed by different scientists. So in 1935, Davison and Danieli proposed a model and they were uh, supported by another scientist called Robertson. So it is actually effectively called as a sandwich model proposed by Davison, Danieli and Robert Robertson. Now as one can observe in the sandwich model, what was proposed by Davison and Danieli particularly was that the lipid bilayer on either side has a protein layer. And so it was considered that the two protein layers are sandwich uh, are forming a, a sandwich uh, where the bilipid layer is present between the two uh, protein layers. It's almost like considering that these are two slices of bread with butter in between. Uh, so this effectively was something that was proposed by all the three, and uh, they called it as a trilaminar structure. And they said that this trilaminar structure had a biomolecular leaflet. So this being one leaflet and this being the other leaflet. So this is, uh, this is Robertson who proposed the unit membrane theory, which kind of suggested that all membranes were trilaminar as one unit. Okay, so a single membrane would have a, a unit of uh, three layers that is what the uh, 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 proposed theory is and all the three layers were con continuous with each other now if there is a second layer then the second layer will also be a trilaminar if there is a third layer then the third layer will also be a trilaminar so each unit will always be a trilaminar is what robertson had suggested in his model now, of course, what has been accepted and uh, all the modified, uh, a lot of new things having been found, it is still the single Nicholson's fluid mosaic model that is accepted as the uh, model for membrane structure. Uh, they proposed it in 1972 and uh, their, main, uh, their main conclusions after their studies was that uh, the Membrane constitutes or, or comprises of peripheral proteins. So you can see on the surface are present proteins and they are called as the peripheral proteins. There are what is called as transpilayer proteins or what is also called as transmembrane proteins. So effectively such proteins are going to traverse the bilipid layer, okay, have a cytoplasmic phase and also have an extracellular phase. So the single protein that is present over here is able to traverse the membrane. It is able to, that means it has a membrane spanning region, it has an intracellular domain and it has an extracellular domain. So we all know that proteins can fold from its primary structure to secondary structure to tertiary structure 
if need be even quaternary structure and once they are folded the folded protein has several motifs and these motifs can be present within domains so as you can see over here for the transmembrane protein there are three domains one that is spanning the hydrophobic bilipid layer one that is the extracellular uh, domain and one that is the intracellular domain the third way in which uh, the proteins are present are as integral proteins so they uh, they are completely present uh, and sconced within the bilipid layer so such proteins are called as integral proteins and therefore as you can observe over here singer nicholson kind of proposed that the proteins are interspersed within the bilipid layer so you don't have a layer outside and a layer inside but it can be present anywhere in between within the bilipid layer now uh, of course uh, the bilipid layer as uh, gotter and grendel suggested stays uh, even in the singer nicholson uh, fluid mosaic model but there are certain characteristic uh, characteristics that were proposed for this model and that is uh, they they predicted or they proposed that the lipid to protein ratio is going to be high in most uh, membranes uh, that the lipids are unperturbed by the proteins okay that is another thing that was kind of uh, proposed by them okay lipids and proteins are in constant motion so that was something that uh, made them suggest that the uh, membrane is a fluid okay so it has a fluidic property and that is uh, because they are, they felt that lipids and proteins were in constant motion also what they found because of the the you know distribution of the proteins and the uh, lipids per se the composition of the uh, lipids in the bilipid layer they were suggestive of the fact that lipids and proteins in membrane are asymmetric and this asymmetry leads to what is called as the mosaic pattern okay like one can observe in a tile where you have this marble chips present in in just a a kind of random order there is no symmetry per se there is only asymmetry but they are all in a pool of um you know um they are in a pool and here the pool is basically the pool or the sea of the lipids per se over the years as uh, uh the membrane has been studied more in depth there are certain modifications or there are certain aspects or certain proposed theories of uh, singer nicholson that has been modified today so for example what has been understood is that having a lipid to protein ratio only with lipids being high and proteins being less is not necessary there are many cases where membranes have a higher protein uh, concentration rather than the lipids so it can be effectively either the lipid protein ratio being high or you could also have protein lipid ratio high lipids are perturbed by the proteins so that is something that it was completely different from what singer nicholson had suggested the thickness of the membrane was also observed to be uneven at certain parts they were found to be narrower at certain parts they were found to be more broader so the bilipid layer thickness itself could vary because it would depend very much on how the proteins are uh, present in the bilipid layer now what is also very uh, clear is that many of the transmembrane proteins have very distinct extra membranous uh, uh, portions so this this is a um, this is a, a portion of a protein which is forming the extracellular domain well this is a portion of the protein which is forming an intracellular domain and this intracellular domain can in turn bind to many proteins within plus this extracellular domain can also bind to several uh, extra uh, uh, cellular matrix which are also proteins so you could have these interacting with other proteins outside the cell these interacting with proteins present inside the cell so um what was understood is that uh, you have the membrane structure being very highly dynamic it could it can be uh, changing plus it can also yet necessarily be uh, present as domains because uh, you can have the proteins associated with the protein uh, with the bilipid layer bound to proteins outside and uh, these bound to proteins inside so this will become static you see it will not move because there is something that is holding it so 
uh, even if this lip uh, this protein wants to move it may not be able to move because this is being held by a protein inside so you may have several such domains uh, present in the lipid which is not constantly moving only moving at certain times but yet many other components in the bilipid layer or the membrane can be constantly moving so this is something that has been understood now and um, thereby several functions have been attributed to cell membranes cell membranes are a, not just a protective barrier now they are able to interact with other cells so you have cell cell interaction they are able to uh, enable cells to move they are able to enable cells to bind to certain substratum they are able to carry out signal signaling okay so signal transduction is possible so there are membrane transport is another thing so all these functions are attributed to the membrane and that is thanks to the bilipid layer and to the uh, membrane proteins so therefore after a lot of studies what has also been concluded is that the cell membrane is more mosaic than it is fluid so uh, earlier the concept was it is quite fluid compared to it being mosaic now of course that stance has changed and it is being suggested that it is more mosaic than it is fluid so let us make the conclusions all membranes are made up of amphipathic lipids that form a solute soluble uh, sorry a uh, stable bilayer protecting the inner environment of the cells or organelles from the outer environment so they are basically compartmentalizing the proteins and lipids interaction with each other uh, to form the three layers with proteins on both sides of the bilipid layer and this model was proposed by davson danielli and robertsons the accepted and now updated model of singer nicholson's fluid mosaic model has a bilipid layer with integral and peripheral proteins interspersed here and there so you do not have a very a uh, highly definite structure you can have the proteins in, interspersed so therefore that leads to what we call as mosaic the membrane is now considered to be in equilibrium between fluidity and rigidity with it being more mosaic than fluid defining several functionalities of the membranes So it has been almost 50 years that the basic model of the cell membrane was proposed and it remains relevant for describing a variety of intracellular and cellular membranes across various kingdoms and species thank you